If you had to guess what David Dobrik's perfume smelled like, what scent would you say? Musty retirement home. I was home. literally like, going to say <laughs> like warehouse. Stale. Stale. <laughs> stale air. Stale. Just like his YouTube Just, channel. I'm, I'm going to go with that. <laughs> hey, everybody, and welcome back to Sip or Spill. As always, I'm Louis Levante. This week, Tati is on vacation, sipping and spilling elsewhere. So I'm not going to leave you hanging. Today to fill in is one of my very good friends, Lauren Ashley Beck. You may know her from TikTok. You may know her from Survivor, but there is so much more to you than meets the eye. What an introduction, Louis. <laughs> Thank you so much. I need you all the, all, all the time. I know. I feel like we, me and Lauren had met through TikTok. We became mutuals. I remember you followed me and I was a fan of Survivor and I was like, oh my God, like I know who you are. And you're like, I love you. I was obsessed and from then, day one. And then I came to LA in like March of 2021. We met up, hung out, and the rest was history. The rest was history. We sipped and spilled on that hangout, we didn't did, we? did, and we sipped alcohol. A lot of sips a, were a had. Lot of, a lot yeah. of sips. Yeah, a lot of times. stumbles yes, were had as well. Yes. Trips and falls. Um, but, you know, obviously you did Survivor, and a lot of people know you for that, but I know you have been doing so much with hosting and being in TV, and that's kind of what you did first. You yes. wanted to be a reporter. Yes, yeah. So TV hosting has always been the dream for me. Um, and then most recently, I just did the rundown on E!, which was really, really fun. I got to spill all about pop culture, and I'm excited to do that here with you, Louis. Oh, I love that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I remember, too, when you posted, I was like, I used to watch the rundown religiously, and to see you like in that chair was like mind-blowing to me. I lost my mind. It was honestly such a surreal moment, and I just want more of those moments. And I feel like this is in the same realm of that. So, just two hundred dollars a pop, like Kanye. Yeah, <laughs> and we will get to that. The two hundred dollars a pop. Speaking though, now moving into our pop culture news, I, I know you don't watch Euphoria as okay. much as I do. Hold on, not Lewis putting me on blast. <laughs> I am a fraud. I have this Euphoria makeup on. I love it. I'm obsessed with Maddie. <laughs> And I don't even know who, who she is. Like, I, I was going to say this bitch, but I don't know if I'm allowed to say yes, that. Yes, you can. I don't even know it. who she is. So, um, yeah, can you educate me on Euphoria? Yes. Yeah, so, okay. Euphoria is coming to its finale this week. So, it's only, like, ten episodes. It's season two. A lot of shit has happened. And, um, basically, this whole season has been, like, a buildup. And the last episode is going to explode. So, this past episode, actually... Um, there was a play. So Lexi, the character, spoiler alert to anybody who hasn't seen up until this point, tune out now, watch it, and then come back. So Lexi, um, Cassie's sister, has been, you know, doing this play, you know, casting people, writing it, directing it, everything. And this past episode, the play went on at the school. The, the play ended up being about all of her friends and the school and just, like, what goes on. And she put on the main... Uh, put the main antagonist, Jacob Alordi, who is Nate, on complete blast. Like, called him out on, you know, obviously, like, things he's done to Maddie, things he's done to Cassie, to the whole friend group. And he was in the audience. They were all in the audience. And literally, we just did a TikTok, and it's like, Maddie saying, wait, is this play about us? And it was. And it causes, like, so much shit, so much drama, that next episode, the last episode, it, shit's going to hit the fan. Yeah, I was reading um, some articles with E! Online, and they were saying how um, Lexi's takedown of Nate had us feeling a little like less than happy about what happened. And I have been keeping up with it on TikTok and stuff. Um, and I do agree that I am conflicted about what is being talked about in terms of Nate and all of that stuff. Like, yeah, he might be a shitty person and all that good stuff, but like, or bad stuff. But I don't know that exposing something that's so personal and private is the way to go. Yeah, and you're basically hinting at the fact that, like, there was a scene um, in the locker rooms where it was, like, showing that, like, Nate, Nate is the main football player, yeah. and the character in the play was basically portraying Nate without saying it, yeah. um, but clearly showing it, and it was giving, hinting at, you know, um, his sexuality, whether he's gay, bisexual, whatever it is. Um, and people were saying that's almost like outing him as a character. Yeah. And personally, we were talking about this beforehand. I get that. Like, you should never out someone. Like, no one should ever have to be forced to come out and no. tell their or sexuality. No, or even specula speculating on other people's sexuality. Exactly. Why, why are we speculating? Why would anybody do that? Mm -hmm. And I think, too, because, um, like, I was telling personally, like, I've gone through that where people, you know, speculate. They try to force you. And it doesn't feel good at all. Like, no one is ever going to feel good about being forced to do something or 
before they know it or when they know it. Um, it's just not great. My take on it, though, is I didn't feel conflicted until I started reading about it. Okay. I started to think about it. I was like, okay, I get what people are saying. Like, you should never out someone. But I didn't think of it like that. I thought of it in the sense, like, as a fan of the show and watching it go on, like, no one fucking likes Nate. He is a terrible, terrible person who has done horrible things to all of these girls. And beyond that, to he beat up a guy in season one, like, to a pulp. Like, he's done just awful things where I'm like, in a real world where it was a real person, like... I would not wish that upon anybody, but because we're such fans of the show that like we know we hate Nate, like I didn't even bat an eye at it. You didn't even think about it. You I didn't, didn't even flinch. think about it. I was like, okay. I was like, yeah, get him, Lexi. Like yeah. Lexi's protecting her family, yeah. and I would do the same too. Like that was the only way that someone was going to get at him was through the play and revealing that. Yes, it's it sounds really bad now that I'm saying it, but I'm just like, in the real world, I would have been like, okay, that. Of course, yeah. of course, of course. When mm -hmm. you're talking about real people, not characters of a show. Yeah, that makes sense. It's interesting that you say when you started reading about it is yeah. when you were like, oh, okay, maybe mm -hmm. that's a little. Well, because it's like there's little things that you, first of all, don't pick up about the show. Like there's little parallels that they do where it's like um, something that happened just now in the, the second season parallel to the first season. Yeah. You don't even realize those, th uh, realize those things and yeah. you want to realize those things. So when something is happening to like, a bad, like an, an evil character. It's like, you're just like, take that. Yeah, like get him, yeah. get him. But yeah. like, in hindsight, like, yeah, it's really bad. But then people are on Twitter like, oh, is he an ally now? Cause he was like, that's so homophobic. But it's like, okay, then it's like, where's the line as the where's character? Where's the line as the character? Um, but I do see like where people are saying like, we're uncomfortable. It's like, it's a complicated situation because it's a character who is really terrible, but that's also a terrible thing to do to anybody. Absolutely. On that note, though, I think if you are talking about mirroring real life experiences, it is a teachable moment for people that are watching. This is what you shouldn't do to somebody that mm -hmm. is in this circumstance or like despite how somebody may treat people, you still can't do things like that to real life people. I think, too, Euphoria is such a huge um, it's like an amplification of these like little problems. Like they make them so much more dramatic and crazy where it's like. And yes, I know to people go through that. Like that isn't like it's amplified in real life where people actually go through that. But um, when I watch it, I think they're making it so much more prominent to teach those lessons. Where like now that you're saying it, it's like people are learning. Like people are seeing like, oh, that wasn't good. Especially these kids that are watching these shows. You mm -hmm. know, you hear all the time like euphoria is too much. Kids shouldn't be watching this. But I actually think it's the opposite because yeah. it is a learning tool. I actually. Um, I was talking to this makeup artist, she's a mother, and she's like, I have 13 to 16 year old daughters, and we sit down and we watch the show together and yep. we talk about it. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, for that and those teachable moments, I think it's great. Yeah. And it's entertaining. I'm spoiled though, and I know you're about to do predictions, so I'm literally gonna sit here and put my hands in my ears oh my God, yeah. while you give your season two finale predictions. Okay, I so can't hear you. I'm gonna <laughs> talk to camera, I'm gonna talk, I will, I'll like, if you have anything, just jump in. Okay. So in terms of my predictions for the cast, we're gonna start with Rue and Jules. Rue and Jules, not gonna be as close as they used to be, not in love, gonna find new best friends. I think they're just gonna move on from what happened. Everybody wants to know what is going to happen to Fez and Ashtray. Fez is going to be traumatized. And if you saw the preview, Ashtray, dead in the bathroom. I'm telling you right now, he is not making it to season three, which is very sad. Um, Cassie, I think she is at her breaking point. She's going to do something she's going to regret the next episode. And she will have no friends, no boyfriend, nothing. Maybe in the hospital, she might, you know, Maddie might do something to her. Who knows? Cat. We're not going to know anything about Kat because I have a feeling she won't even be in the finale. But those are my predictions for Euphoria, the season finale. If I'm right, we I will tell you. I will tell you next episode. I will let you know that I was right. I will scream it from the rooftops. Let's move forward to something that I can actually talk about and give an opinion about. David Dobrik and Jeff Wittick are on the outs. Yep. I mean, who isn't David Dobrik on the outs? with I feel like this is like a consistent pattern with don't, him don't you feel like too it's like old stale yeah tea. Like yes it's just, it's just like okay who else got injured who else didn't you call basically a fan asked Jeff if David had reached out because he just got uh, uh, on his latest eye surgery and he said that he hadn't and he was like no I don't talk to that in ever like really intensely upset and I guess if that was my real friend or I felt like that was my true friend and they didn't check up on me I would be mad too 
I would be upset. Well, yeah, you, first of all, physically pained him, physically hurt him, traumatized him, and almost, like, in a way, embarrassed him, because this was, like, everywhere. Yeah. It's just, like, not... Like you have, first of all, you have so much money. I hope he's maybe paying for his surgeries. I highly doubt it. There's no way. I mean, with, with Jeff's reaction, there's no way that he has done any, it's just weird to me. Like, what are you doing that you can't, it takes two seconds to send a text message. Yeah. Or even even give a call. That's one of your friends. Yeah. I'm sure you see him on Instagram, like, like his pictures or whatever, but it's so funny too, because I was reading the comments and everyone in the comments is like, yeah, you're, you're a fake friend too. Like you're just using this for clout. But I, I'm, I don't. Yeah, I bash, got my face bashed, bashed in for it. I'm clout. using this for clout, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's that checks out. Adds up, checks out. I know. He didn't respond, which he shouldn't. I don't believe in responding to stuff like that. But yeah. See, I, I do. I'm you a, do? I'm a clap back. You're love, a clap back? I love a good clap back. My opinion is, you're watching me, bitch. You must like something here. That is kind of the clap back I use. I'm like, thanks for the engagement. Right, I okay. Think, On TikTok, I will. Because like, I'll be like, thanks. thank you for the 10 cents. Because people the hate that. The .01 cent. .01 cent. Yeah. Everybody hates that. They do. And when I started TikTok too, like, I would always clap back in like the meanest way, and people are like here for the co- here for the creators' comments because I'd be so mean. Um, I digress. Anyway. Well, and you're so good at it <laughs> too, like getting people just like little subtle jabs yeah. at them. Um, but back to David, <laughs> uh, more jabs. I will take yeah. some jabs at him. Um, <laughs> I just feel like he ha- did this horrible thing. People not only did he hurt Jeff and like obviously like was irresponsible. He's had other people come out about him with like other allegations. And then he disappeared, which a lot of influencers do that. Like when something bad happens to their career, their reputation, they're probably told to hide. Like go away. Don't post anything for a little bit. Just write out what you have for now. You lose your sponsors. Deal with it. He came back. With a travel show. And like nothing happened. Like nothing happened. I'm on back. Like, yeah, I, I, I was very surprised to see it. And I was actually surprised to see who was on board with that after all the allegations. Like it's wild to me. Who else was on board? He, his show is on Discovery Plus. Oh, my God. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, he has a travel show. I turned on my TV, and there he was, like, holding a bunch of passports and stuff, doing a travel show like nothing had happened. Well, that's where you go from doing, <laughs> literally go from being, like, the host of, like, a Nickelodeon show to being a piece of crap, and now you're hosting a travel show. It's wild to me. Well, there was so much more beyond that. This week, Jeff, obviously, like, well, rightfully so, Jeff unfollowed David. Then he did the Instagram Live, obviously did everything that you were talking about. And then after that, he actually went to, I guess it was, like, the the store where David sells his perfume, and, like, the, the online store, and screenshotted that David was selling his perfume for 50% off and called him out. It was just, like, basically... This must not be selling. You're a sociopath. LOL. <laughs> it's always the LOL yeah. for me that just like, makes it nice. Sends me when people are just like, oh, must, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> that's fine. I hate you. LOL. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bark at a bitch if I'm doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not about to keep barking at a bitch. Not to do nothing. That's fine. That's fine. That's broke, fine. broke bitch. Broke bitch, David. <laughs> but what? <laughs> Have that's you, the interaction between the two of them. That's it. They're just yeah, like going it. back yes, at each other. Exactly right. Have you smelled David's perfume? I have not. And is it a cologne or I, is it perfume? I'm getting the vibe that it's perfume. perfume. So is it for who's it for? I think it's okay. It's for I think it's for both. Like it's 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 for everyone. There must be a line because it was perfume and cologne. I'm okay. assuming because there was like this huge ridiculous stunt he did. It was like um like the CIA rolled up to people's houses in like sedans and they got out in suits and had briefcases and went up to each influencer's house that he was sending it to. And then they opened the briefcase and his like line of scents were in there. Was he there? No. Oh, it was just like these random random secret service perfume delivery. Yeah. And they're like, Oh, like on their stories, like thanks for the perfume, David. If you had to guess what David Dobrik's perfume smelled like, what would you say it smelled like? (laughs) Why do I get like musty retirement home? I was home? literally like, gonna say musk. Like m- oh musk? musk. I said musty. Oh, you said musk. Like musty, dusty. Like you stink. <laughs> like stinky. Like old people smell. Like it's like the air has not moved for yeah, some it's time. Like very still. Like warehouse. Stale. Stale. <laughs> stale air. Stale. Just like his YouTube channel. I'm, I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> I would have said the same thing. Almost like I those. Don't... You ever? 
<laughs> yes. I'm, I'm not allowed in a church. So, um, <laughs> you know, those crackers that they, the, the body of Christ. Yes. Like that. Like the like way the, those taste, that's way, how that smells. Like paper. Yeah. <laughs> like crunchy paper. Yes. Crunchy paper. I guess paper is crunchy. <laughs> yeah. I would say so. Yeah. yeah. I'm not, I won't be running uh, to the, to the stores to get. David's perfume. Yeah, I don't think so either. And I think somebody in the comments should let us know if they've tried it and what it smells like. Yes, please. And let us know if we're, you know, on point. Speaking of being on point, I have a game I want to play with you. Let's play. Yeah. I'm have ready. you, do you know the term cap? No cap. Yes. Okay, good. So you understand it. Not him aging me. Yes, I know what cap is. We just did a TikTok where you're like, Am I too old to be here? <laughs> I'm with the times, okay? You are. You're very hip. I know what the hip. kids do these days. You're hip, you're young, you're ready to go. But we like to play a game on here called Cap or No Cap, okay. where we are going to read headlines to each other from the news, allegedly or actually, and we are going to say if they're cap or no cap. For those watching, cap means it's not true. No cap means it's true. It was in the headlines. So you have some for me and I have some for you. I believe you're going for... First. I'm going first. Yes. Are you ready? I'm going to read it like it's a news headline. Yes, read okay. it. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Tom Holland and Zendaya moving in after buying $4 million home together. One, two, three. I'm going to say no cap because I feel like they are progressing a lot in their relationship. $4 million home together already? $4 million. I mean, they can afford it. That, let's was, not get it twisted. I was going to say, like, euphoria. Disney Channel, Spider Man, Sp Spidey Man, Marvel. I think they can afford way more than four million. That's why I'm saying it sounds more realistic that it's less because they're like, just in case, you know, we split. It's ch cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Tom Dea is on track to okay. move in together. Yes, but they're so young. I just don't think they're gonna move in together yet. So is it cap or no cap? It's it's cap. <laughs> Yeah. So I got it, wrong. it says um, that he shut down the rumors this week live on Kelly with Ryan. He said, I've had so many people call me up because apparently I bought a new house in South London, which is completely false. I was like, wow, what a surprise. Wonder when I'll get the keys. Not the British accent. The British accent. <laughs> the British accent. A sport of tea. Sport of tea. A sport of, tea. A sport of Cheers. Pinkies up, darling. <laughs> Cheerio. Oh, there's nothing in here. There's nothing in here. <laughs> Well, it's, okay, so yeah, it's 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 total cap. I love them. I think like again, like yes, they they have a lot of money. They've done a lot of things, but I think like let them be kids. Let them let them yes. have this moment, honeymoon phase, have fun. And You're calling them kids. They're literally my age. Tom Holland is 25. It's okay at my ripe age of, <laughs> I'm not gonna say <laughs> they're kids to me. You're you're, you're baby. I'm a li you're just little, a little baby. A little baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love them too. I'm a yes. huge fan of yeah, them. I, I should, love their all day long. love their relationship. Yes. Now I'm going to read a headline for you. <clears throat> the Foo Fighters make a horror movie, cap or no cap. Sounds like cap, but it's true because I actually went to the movie premiere. It's oh. called Studio Six Six Six, and it's a horror film. I'm I'm friendly with the Foo Fighters, and um, I call them the dad band. They're just like a bunch of dads. That's the vibe I get. That they are, they mm. are. And so a bunch of dads made a horror film. It's 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 pretty decent. Like there are some funny moments. Lionel Richie makes a cameo appearance, so that's really fun. Um, they have a lot of different actors in there. It's pretty intense, um, but it's definitely got some like comedy moments. Mm -hmm. They did at the premiere. It was it was so much fun. It was at the Chinese Theater in Hollywood. Oh, very nice. And yeah, it was really, really cool. And they have like these like tickets printed out for you. And then they had all these different um, like Studio 666 decals in place of where like the popcorn and like the snack shack is. Mm -hmm. It was really fun. It was great. You yeah. should see it. We I should, will. Let's go I see it. I love a good horror movie. Yeah. We should just go after this. It's good. Like, let's let's just, do that. Let's, let's sip and spill and then go see a movie. Yeah. Sound good? I'm down. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> for our, so we have one more headline for Cap or No Cap and it's <clears throat> It's a love story. Taylor Swift and Joe Alwyn are engaged after more than five years together. Cap or no cap? I'm going to say maybe cap, but I'm also going to say the same thing that I said about Tom Dea. Like, just let them live. Yes. You know? Yeah. Like, there's all these rumors going around because they went on vacation. Like, they're going to do that. Yeah. I was saying, if she's going to get engaged, it's not going to be like a normal, typical... Hi, guys, I went on vacation. Here's the ring. No, that's not happening. Her marketing team will not let that happen. They'll be like, okay, you're getting engaged. No one's allowed to know. No family, nobody. We are making a music video. You're going to re-release re Reputation into a love ballad album. And then we are going to go on tour. 
Speaking of reputation, somebody on Twitter said, until Taylor Swift herself tells me she's engaged or married, y'all can keep your tabloids to yourselves. Reputation era taught me better. Yeah. And it's true. Like, we know Taylor. Mm -hmm. People are going to read in between the lines if something like that is happening or coming. Mm -hmm. Just everything in her videos, like her Easter eggs, her concerts, like there's little things she just puts out. Like, she would not let an eng a huge moment like an engagement just be like a Instagram post. No, and like given everything that Taylor has gone through publicly with her relationships, we still hate you, Jake. Um, <laughs> I just feel like we just need to like back off and let her have those moments. And when she wants to let us in, we'll be there for her to celebrate. But until that moment, I don't know. I don't know. I just want a world tour where the first step on stage is her just like her hand in the air yes. and she's like rising through the floor. Yeah. <laughs> she's, like, she's like, yep, engaged. Just pointing to it. <laughs> yeah. And it's like bad blood playing the normal version, yes. but then it goes into like a love ballad. And Joe's face just like behind her on all the big screens. It's like flashes across and people are like, what was that? James. <laughs> We need to get into more news too. And obviously there's some topics that we love to talk about. There's some topics that we don't want to talk about. So we have a segment on here called Sip or Spill. Just like the show, love that, where we can read a headline and then we choose whether we want to sip on it um, and not talk about it or spill, where we just let loose, go for it. So obviously no pressure. You can sip on whatever you want. You can spill on whatever you want. But what I am I sipping? You are sipping on the news. Oh, okay, got it. You're not <laughs> sipping anything because there is nothing in there. <laughs> One day there will be, One but day. I don't trust myself. Champs, okay, yeah. I dump it on myself. I'd... So Coachella and Stagecoach, um, both the festivals dropped all COVID-related restrictions, including negative tests and masks. Make it make sense. Thank you. Can okay. we spill? Yes, I'm okay. spilling. I'm spilling 100%. Spill away, please go. I, I just feel like nobody, no other state has been like nothing, no tests, no masks, no nothing. Why the... Why <laughs> didn't want to track up another one there? Why, <laughs> why do you think, as a festival with musical artists and hundreds of thousands of people, that you are um, an exception to the rule? It makes zero sense. Like to say nothing at all. What are we doing? Yeah. I don't get it, and I personally do not feel safe. Like it yeah. just makes me, it gives me pause. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go to something like that if it's going to be that relaxed and that lenient. Like, where did the jump happen from test to this to that to nothing at all? Yeah, and for both Stagecoach and Coachella, yeah, they were calling it COVID Cella. It's literally going like, to be COVID Cella. That's horrible. Well, you said it best. You were like. All of these people, hundreds of, uh, hundreds of thousands of people from multiple different states, maybe even countries, everywhere in this one freaking desert. Flying from around the world. Flying. Trains, planes, automobiles, all of it. it you never know. And I, I just think it's just, I, I honestly feel like what's going to end up happening is either sales aren't going to be as great mm -hmm. or there's going to be too much pushback and they're going to have to change it. I'm not going unless they change it. Yeah. I can't. Did you get a ticket? <sighs> you did. You did. I also want to report at Coachella, but like, I feel like I can't do that if there's like, there has to be some sort of like, I feel like there has to be safety protocol for things like that because you know, like they have most likely sponsors and like brands going like brands are going to look so bad if there's no safety protocols in place where there might be something for like where you're protected. But like that also looks bad where it's like, you're protecting like the brands and the press and the, and that, and the people, and but you're you not little, everybody animals, else. Yeah. Do whatever you want. Go you be little can, animals yeah, and contract yeah. disease. Yeah. I don't know where, where the, where that jump happened. I know it started with stagecoach, I feel. Yes. And then COVID followed or COVID, COVID mm -hmm. cello followed suit. And like all of this is being announced now, like no mass, no nothing after tickets went on sale. So people like you have already bought tickets and are invested on going, might have flights, hotels. My friends have their Airbnb ready to go. Like, They've already paid all this money and Coachella is pocketing that. And also, you're right. Like, I wouldn't have bought a ticket if I knew that there was no mask mandate in place. Yep. That being said, if you've been to festivals or have been to Coachella, you know that it's dusty as hell there. So I'm going to be wearing a bandana around my face anyway. Literally, wear your mask because yeah. you're not only going to maybe get COVID, you're going to choke on dust. <laughs> like, what, what is enjoyable about that? Not a thing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. I think I... I wanted to go and that's great and all, but I know when Beyonce performed, I just watched it on YouTube. Yeah. So I'm like, I'll watch what I need to watch when Same I'm, effect. without being in an unsafe area and yeah. also spending all that money. Yeah. 
my pockets ain't that big. I don't got that kind of money. So yeah, I'm I just can't. Yeah. I've got one for you. I'm ready. Kanye is beefing with Peppa Pig. Spill. <laughs> Spill. Give it to me. I Give literally me your I'm living for the fact that it's like Kanye and then Peppa Pig because it's like <laughs> It's so ridiculous. It's just like, why? It's a cartoon character. I know he came out, though, with this whole list of just, like, who he's beefing with. And the fact that Peppa Pig is among, like, all of these people. Like, l- like listen to this. Go Not the list. Peppa Pig. So Peppa Pig is the culmination of this headline. Wiz Khalifa, Jay-Z, Billie Eilish. And then Peppa Pig is ranked after Billie Eilish in the list. Ray J, JT, Jimmy Kimmel, and the list. Harriet Tubman. What? I'm baffled. Okay, Kanye, it's Black History Month. It, it's not over yet. We got a bone to pick with you. <laughs> I am just... Travis Scott. Wait, didn't Travis let him in in the little girls in his daughter's party? Why are we having beef with Travis Scott? I think he's going to have beef with whoever he wants and whenever he wants. It's at this point he's just like, who's next? Let's go. You didn't finish the list. J. Cole, South Park. Pete Davidson skeet. Yeah. It's, we all know that. And I feel like that list goes longer in his on. head. Like, yeah, yeah. like is Taylor Swift on there? No. She was. She was. <laughs> she probably still is like in the back of his mind. He's like, but you're on the back burner for now. I'm over you. Yeah, for now. For um, now. Yeah, I just can't. And then what do you think about this $200 stim player to listen to Donda 2? The fact that you had to explain to me that it was a contraption <laughs> that I had to buy says all you need to say about it. Like, I have a phone for a reason. I have Spotify for a reason. I am not buying your silly little contraption to listen to an album that I might like one song on. In the first day, it got $2.2 million in 24 hours. 11,000 <laughs> units were being sold. And it's so weird, too, because when they say unit, like, what are they? What is this? Like a Walkman? What, yeah. what are they? What is it? Like, when they, like pop it and it Gen pops Z, up and you put Walkman the little Walkman is it something that plays music. You plug it into your, your earphones. The little earphones. Yeah, so they were like the big, massive ones. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I wouldn't, I don't know that even if I had the $200, because like you said, our pockets are not that big. <laughs> I don't, th- I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay. I'm not. No, absolutely not. You I'm know what not. I could get with $200? What? What, Lewis? Many other things, like a lot of chicken nuggets. Like, I feel like there are so many other things that I could spend my $200 on. It will not be something that is from the 1990s. <laughs> so here's the deal. Being that Kanye did make money, $2.2 million to be exact. From I who? Do, I, I mean, listen, 11,000 units were sold. Somebody's buying it. Do we think it's genius? Emphasis on the genius because his new three-part documentary on Netflix is called Genius, but it's spelled J-E-E-N-Y-U-H-S. Genius. You know, that gives me that gives me seriously. that gives me the same energy as that episode of SpongeBob where it's like, hey Patrick, your genius is showing. <laughs> he's like, what? Where? Like it gives me that energy. It's like he's calling like he's trying to like be smart, I, but it's not happening. Okay, like here's his point was I'm doing this because platforms like Spotify and Apple take a percentage of the artist's money. Now I'm an artist too, and I'm sensitive about my shit. So I get it. However, Kanye. Are you hurting like that, sir? Yeah. Like, do you actually need the money? And I think if he does want to ride on that wave, let's get some new artists in there. Let's go on TikTok and see all the talent that's on there mm-hmm. and pull some of those people and get their music seen and put money in their pockets if yeah. we're really going to talk about, like, because if helping you, artists. If you think you're hurting on Spotify, Apple Music, whatever, you, exactly. as Kanye, exactly. when there's these artists that have to, like, not beg, but necessarily, but they're on TikTok, like, Hi, like that song you just listened to is mine. Like no one has ever heard it because it's not, you know, blowing up on Spotify, but I thought I would come to TikTok. Those people are hurting because they are so talented and no one is seeing it. And he's just like, screw Spotify. Like I'm going to make my own thing and make more money off of it. Like you said, bring those artists in. Help bring those them. Artists in. Yeah, help if you other really want to help other people, yeah. he's saying that like artists don't make enough, then. Do something about it. Don't just be performative and say something. Absolutely. So Kanye and Peppa Pig are beefing, and it's baffling to me. But the reason is because Kanye's album Donda, which he's been boasting about and promoting everywhere, was rated a six, um, a six point zero by I guess whoever's listening to it. And Peppa Pig's album, which Peppa Pig, the artist, the legend, the icon, hers was rated a six point five, higher than Donda. As she should. And Pop he, off. He is pissed he is pissed off but just to say like peppa's listeners kanye's listeners 
they don't add up. Like, that's not the same people. So I don't know why he's so heated. I mean, you know, because he wants that 0.5. So Peppa actually caught wind that Ye was upset, and Peppa wasn't having it. Peppa tweeted, Peppa didn't need to host listening parties in Mercedes-Benz Stadium to get that 0.5. Peppa is not real. <laughs> Peppa is not real. Like, that is not a real person. And the fact that a cartoon is driving you to this point, I have lost all hope. Like, I have lost all hope I just, for him. Yeah, I just, you know, it's unfortunate because it does feel like every single thing that he sees is a problem. I just hope that he can, you know, get his phone taken yeah, away. Yeah, and like... You know, one of my first roasts that I ever did when I like first started TikTok was Peppa Pig. And I was like, Peppa Pig like is mean to her family, like fat shames her brother. <laughs> but like, go off Peppa, take down Kanye. I mean, is Peppa that girl? It Peppa is like, that girl. Is Peppa problematic? Damn Peppa. Peppa from the block. Peppa from the block. Okay, Peppa got street cred now. Peppa from the pig pen. Clearly. <laughs> So are you into blind items, Lewis? Um, yes, I read like, you know, Dumois yes, on Instagram. Of I eat that up. Who doesn't? I don't I, I like to guess about it because I'm just like, who could it be? It's like a game of like, what is it, when you had to like flip the people when you were little? Guess who? Guess who? <laughs> I flip literally the people? I you like flip them up and down. Wow, how did I get that? <laughs> I don't I'm know. Good. It's because you went like this. That's basically blind items. It's like, do they have this, that, or the other? Yes. I like it. Why are you asking? Let's play. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want to go first. You you get me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I talked to an Oscar voter yesterday who voted for that animal sounding movie, but never saw it. Everyone was talking about it, so they assumed it was good. What movie is that? That animal power the power dog. Yes. Yes. You got it. That was it. The power of the dog. The power of the dog. Which not I've... the power dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got one for you. According to a staffer at this streaming service, who has worked for two other streaming services, the first day numbers for the new movie, starring the Everything in Her Mind A-lister, were the lowest numbers they had ever seen for a first airing of an original movie. Okay. I only know this because I have a friend who saw the movie and said it was like, they're like, it was really good, but the ratings were so bad. So the movie's with Jennifer Lopez, it's Marry Me, which in hindsight, it was her and Owen Wilson, right? Weird pairing. And the streaming service was NBC, so it was Peacock. Oh, you're so good. Well, I'm just into my streaming services. Wow. Don't pay for them. Right. I'm watching stuff, but I promise you I am not paying for a single streaming login, service. Can I get please? Oh, I have somebody else's. <laughs> I have many other logins that are not mine. I love it. Netflix, if you see this, you didn't see anything. You don't even know where I live, so. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take you through our last blind item. Have you noticed how things went abruptly quiet in this sisterly feud? My guess is the less famous sister was offered a sum of money by her more famous sister to do so. Well, it's obvious you're talking about Jamie Lynn and Brittany. Mm -hmm. I'm ready for Jamie Lynn to pack it up because the reason she's being quiet is because of the $15 million book deal that Brittany just got. So that's yeah. what it is. Did Brittany get a book deal? Brittany got a book deal. Interesting. Brittany is about to spill. Jamie Lynn. She's like, I need. She's like, I need to stop with my book. Yes. And move on. Yes. Crocodile tears. I'm ready for them, Jamie. Yeah. That's. I'm just very over the feud. I think I love though, like to like get off the feud because obviously we know they're, they're not gonna get along. Jamie's a terrible person. Brittany is gonna hopefully come too. But I feel like Brittany is coming out with music. I think she is too. She just posted something that she has a new song coming out. They've been yes, and I hope that she does. And I I because at the end of the day. You know that Brit loves, not me saying Brit like I know her. Brit. You know that Brit loves her music. She loves her fans. And I hope that she can find that love again, that like when she first started mm -hmm. and can take control of her own career and yep. do it the way that she wants to do it. And I think too, um, I was saying this to my friends beforehand, like as like a prediction. I was like, I would love for her to go back into a residency, but on her own yes. merit. Because yes. like she said she loves performing. I just saw TikToks of her like, doing like weightlifting to her own songs. songs and yes it was like very like weird because she's like staring at the camera like flipping her head like that but i'm like she's in the gym she's dancing she's got a song coming out i'm like maybe this is like her rebirth and she's coming back like she's getting back in shape she's getting ready to perform she's doing everything so i'm excited i'm I really excited that. so I hopefully that. that will overshadow like jamie and jamie will just like fade into darkness and we'll never see her again i if like even if they wanted a zoe 101 reboot again Absolutely not. I'm done with it. I'm good. Bring back the rest of them. Don't bring yeah. her back. Recast. I'm okay. Yeah, we're good. Bye, Off Jamie. that. Goodbye.
we'll move into our final game that we play every week. It's called Dream or Nightmare, where we will give each other scenarios and we will determine whether that is our dream scenario. Like, oh, would love to live in that world. Or if it's a nightmare scenario where I absolutely hate it, do not want to live in it, burn it with fire. Let's do it. <laughs> ready? I'll read, ready? I'll read one to you first. Okay. So yours is, <clears throat> oh, we were just talking about this man, this lovely man. You're on a date with Kanye. Nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, no. Let, let okay, me get, well, I'll take it yes. there. I, I do. Yes. Okay. I do get it. Yes, but I'm going to let I you I think we're going to stay there, but yes. I'm going to let you finish. Since you're his last attempt to make him jealous, he takes you to Olive Garden. Oh my God. Olive Garden? <laughs> He takes you to Olive Garden and he's covering the check so you can order whatever you want and have unlimited breadsticks. Because when you're here, you're family. <laughs> Are we trying to get this sponsorship? Because I love breadsticks. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to deal with ranting and raving about Skeet the whole time. And if you don't agree with everything he says, he leaves and you have to cover the bill. Dream or nightmare? That's an absolute nightmare. The good part is the breadsticks and the Olive Garden. Yes, my stomach is growling because I, I, of this that's right why. now. I'm like, do you hear it? Yes, I do. <laughs> Yeah, I would I would say nightmare for sure. Yeah, yeah, I think I would go dream. You would go oh dream? God. Um yeah, I would go dream because I'm a good liar. So you could just pretend like you're agreeing with him but you're really not. You're just there for the breadsticks. I would wake up that day and be like, I'm going to lie today. That like four <laughs> breadsticks. I'm going to lie to this I'm man. going to choose violence and lie to this man who has no other benefit to me than be uh, the breadsticks. And I think about like breadsticks, at. salad, pasta, eggplant, chicken parm, like all the like, for free. Mm, 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 free 99. Mm, free. Mm, 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 mm. The flavors are melting on my tongue. <laughs> Let's split the bill. Let's, oh, no. we aren't. He will be covering the bill. Oh. That's he will be, because I'm He's lying to him. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. all right. All right. All so right. So dream right. for me. Nightmare okay. for you. Okay. I have one for you. Okay. You're massively in debt, but you just found out Taylor Holder wants to give you a Tesla. Only problem is you're not exactly sure where he got the Tesla. He shows up to your house in a black on black Tesla Model S and you notice Elon Musk in the back seat. They ask you or rather tell you that it's time to go to the moon. Dream or nightmare? Nightmare? One, I like you were reading that and nothing was clicking in my brain as to what any of those words meant. <laughs> like it was just like gibberish after gibberish and I was like what the hell? So nightmare and also I I always get that scenario that I love like reading it on Twitter where people are like if you had the opportunity like there was another earth out somewhere else it was another planet just like earth literally you could live on it it would be like rehabited whatever would you go I always say no because I feel like there's so it's so scary in the unknown and what's out there like what could happen I don't want to get on a spaceship I personally wouldn't go anywhere with Elon Musk. So yeah, after <laughs> the after the there. name he gave his child, yeah. I don't trust his judgment very much. But it's, it's X A E dash twelve. But didn't he change it? They changed it back, didn't they? They changed it to something else. They like said Alex? it stands for Ash. Oh, it's yeah. So they didn't change. So I'm it. just gonna like my name is gonna be this, and I'm gonna say this stands for Lauren Ashley Beck. Yes, they, it's they're like it's this a smiley is, face. that this long mishmash of symbols is ash welcome ash, well, welcome to my tesla welcome let's go to the moon <laughs> this has been so much fun i had so much fun with you me too Lewis. i feel like we need to do this more i would love to have you back on say less i'm yeah. here say less yeah. oh my god yes can we make that happen Please. yes <laughs> <laughs> no one said they're anything. Like, they're like, they <laughs> oh, no, hate you. She's, she's like, she's like, yeah. They don't like you. <laughs> well, that will do it for another episode of Sipper Spill. I've had so much fun spilling it with Lauren Ashley Beck. If you want to hear me spill any more information, make sure to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff at Louis Levante. And if you guys want to keep up with me, it's at Lauren Ashley Beck on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all that good stuff. Because we on brand with it. We on brand with it. And make sure to tune in next week.